Huntington's disease is a hereditary brain disorder that affects about 30,000 Americans. Scientists have found the gene that causes the disease and are actively searching for effective treatments and possibly a cure. Let's take note with Paul and Marianne Uhouse of Stormstown, Pennsylvania. For more than five years, Paul has been struggling with Huntington's disease. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. Five years ago, Marianne, you started to think you saw symptoms of Huntington's disease, and yet you never said anything. Why, what were the symptoms, and, and why didn't you say anything to Paul? I could see a lot of facial expressions that he was using, like he was squinting his eyes, and I could tell by his legs were giving in. It seemed like his leg movements were a lot weaker than what they normally were. He would drop things, and I thought about it, but I said, oh, I better not mention anything to him because I didn't want to really upset him. So I thought, well, I'll just keep it quiet until he brings it to my attention first. You were a state trooper for, for 16 years and, and recently had to retire from, from that. What were among the first symptoms that you recognized of HD or Huntington's disease? Well, I was uh, stumbling a lot, walking, uh, walking like a drunk and stuff and things, having a hard time maintaining my balance and stuff and dropping things like she said. and. Uh, Huntington uh, disease comes in, in stages. There are actually three stages. What stage are you in, Paul? I'm in the first stage, and uh, that is, uh, every stage is different. Uh, it can last, everybody is different with Huntington disease. Uh, a stage may last, some people may have the stage for many uh, years, and other people may have it for a short period of time. Now, Paul had a 50-50 chance of getting Huntington's disease because his mother had Huntington's disease. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul is, is one of three children. W did anyone else in the house, was anyone else affected? His brother, sister, not yet, but of course they could become affected maybe at the age of 60, sometimes 70. He just happened to get it in an early stage. I think his mother was probably in her late 50s, early 60s when she had it. Right, in fact, it, it comes, the symptoms usually occur at midlife between 30 and 50, but mm -hmm. two-year-olds have actually been diagnosed with, with Huntington's disease. I, I'm wondering how you measure your losses. Do you, Paul, do you know from day to day that you've lost some of the ability that you had before, or is this something that you notice year to year, or month to month? Um, I've noticed some things, but I just try to go on, take one day at a time. How about you, Marianne? It's hard for me to say because I see him every day, but if my mother or his father see him, you know, they'll say, he looks a lot better this time, or it looks like he's getting worse. But I think, um, you know, like you said, we just take day by day. And I don't see any major drastic changes from day to day. Unfortunately, at this point, there is no cure for mm -hmm. Huntington's disease, although scientists have isolated the gene responsible uh, for it. What does that mean in, in terms of Paul's prognosis? Do you, do you have an idea? You mean as far as when a, they're looking for a, a cure, cure or, or how yeah. far off that might be? They keep saying in around 10 years. They keep saying they get closer and closer and closer. So they say about 10 years there should be a cure. It's interesting because uh, Huntington's disease affects as many people as hemophilia or cystic fibrosis or, or muscular dystrophy, and yet we know so much less about mm -hmm. it. Right. Um, I have no idea why that is. That's why we've come forth, you know, to make people aware of this so that when they do see him and they read the article like they didn't, you know, target, now they know what he has instead of looking at him saying, you know, what is his problem? At least they know now that he's affected by this disease. And it's, it's very rare. It's not like Parkinson's or anything like that people have known about. You're watching your mother-in-law who mm -hmm. for, for years now has suffered from Huntington's disease. Can you tell us something about what, what has been going on with her? She's a very wonderful and strong person. She has a smile on her face constantly. I've seen her diminish, because we only see her maybe about twice or three times a year, I think it is. And each time we go, it's worse and worse. And her father, my, or her husband, my father-in-law, is just fantastic. He just really takes total care of her. And he chooses to do that because he said if she goes into a nursing home, they will not take proper care of her, and they need a lot of love and attention. So it's just, it's fantastic. She's always laughing and smiling and not depressed. It deals a lot with how the family handles it and how the family handles the person. 
what, what do you make of that when you see your mother and you see the stage that she's in? How does that affect you? Well, it affects, I uh, think about it a lot because, you know, she, she can't eat. She has to have her food ground up. Uh, you know, she has a hard time talking and things. And, you know, she, she has to, you know, she has a special cup to drink water and things. Your dad brushes her teeth. My dad has to brush her teeth and everything. So she is totally helpless. Is and I, f I feel like, you know, I just, you know, it makes me feel bad. Is there something that you can do to minimize the symptoms, something to prolong your own independence? Well, I'm taking medication right now. Uh, so uh, from Dr. Roy, I take different medication. And also I got it down John Hopkins uh, Hospital in Baltimore. And they give me some pills down there to take. I don't know whether I'm getting a placebo so or you're the part real of, thing. So you're part of an experimental trial? Yes. And you won't know for a year yes. whether you've been getting the yes. actual drug, or, actual the drug or, the, or the placebo. Yes, and then after that, uh, they'll give us the real pill, everybody in the program. I don't know how, depending upon how you look, on, uh, look at it, uh, there, the good news, I guess, is that there is a, now a test that can determine whether other family members uh, have mm -hmm. HD. You two have two children. Is that something that you're, where you'll, oh, will your own children be tested for HD? A lot of people may disagree with me, but no, I refuse to have them tested. Um, I feel that in 10 years there will be a cure. They know they have a 50% chance of getting it, and they'll say to me, you know, Mom, how do we handle this if we do? And I say, you, you know how to handle it. You become strong, and you probably won't get it because in 10 years there will be a cure. You have to keep the positive in this. You can't, you can't dwell on the negative. And why make them worry now what's going to happen to them maybe 50, 60 years down the road? And I'm not going to have them worry about it now. And your kids are teenagers. Right. I have Ashley, who's 18, and she attends Penn State, and Josh is 14. In reading about uh, Huntington's disease and talking about families, uh, I read that it doesn't skip a generation, so that if your children are, are fortunate enough to escape Huntington's mm -hmm. disease, there's no risk that their children uh, will get Huntington's disease. Right. And it also talks about the fact that parents shouldn't withhold information from their kids about the disease. Have you been open about what this could mean? Oh yes, definitely. We're open with the, they've seen his aunt, they've seen his uncle, they see their grandma, so they know everything about this disease. They know, you know, what's going to happen and how it affects them. Oh, we hide nothing from them at all. You, you just mentioned a whole line of, of relatives, so this is something that has been in the U House family yes. for generations. Mm -hmm. Not U House to go Vatsky, uh, but. Uh, Your mother's side of the family. Yes. Yes. One of the symptoms is, is weight loss. I'm wondering what, what should people look for if they suspect or see some of the symptoms that you describe Paul as having five years ago? You mean if they have Yeah, it, what are some of the symptoms to be on the lookout for? Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Probably, you know, facial expressions, jerkiness. You can, you know, you can see like his hands are moving and his legs are moving, something like that. Um, I know he's pretty weak. He's not as strong as he used to be. Not severe weight loss. Um, he'll, it'll fluctuate. His weight will fluctuate. He'll lose and then he'll gain a little bit. Um, depression. It's, it's hard. It's really hard to diagnose unless you're really familiar with the disease itself. Like I said, I could, you know, match him up with his mother, seeing the things that she went through and seeing what he went through to know that he had it. But if you're not aware of the disease, I don't know. And, and diagnosis was, was made by a physician. Right. Blood test. Simple blood test. You, you are, Paul, uh, able to work, though. You're no longer a state trooper, but you are working at Target. Yes. I work at Target and I push carts. What are your daily challenges? Well, uh, my biggest, some of my challenges are uh, I have to lift packages every once in a while. Most of the time I can do some of the packages by myself, but sometimes I have to have help. And but when we're there at Target, uh, if uh, really heavy packages arrive, they require us to lift with two people. So that's what I do. In terms of uh, the challenges, knowing knowing that you have this disease, 
I'm wondering how you get through each day. I, I saw the two of you earlier, and it was remarkable to me that you were laughing and joking. And uh, I've just been impressed by, by that. You, you, you know full well what could be ahead of you, and mm. yet you seem to have a wonderful attitude. Well, I just try to take one day at a time, like I said before. I mean, you have to. You, you, can't, you can't look and see what's going to happen. And I think positive attitude and the strength that I have and the kids have help him a lot, too. I think uh, I read that part of the reason uh, I saw your story in the Center mm -hmm. Daily Times and part of the reason that you told it was so that, first of all, that people understood, uh, you know, why Paul is acting a little bit differently <laughs> than he used to. Right. But also um, uh, because there are other people out there and, and because support is mm -hmm. extremely important. Have other people come forward? Yes, I've had quite a few people call. In fact, I keep in touch with um, one woman on the Internet. She calls me every once, or we talk on the Internet every once in a while, and um, she wants to get together. Her husband has it, and she wants to know how I'm so strong and how I cope with this because I guess she's having a rough time with this. So I'm trying to help her along the way. Okay, I want to give uh, people a, a web address as well as a phone number if you're interested in finding out more about Huntington's disease or HD. The Huntington's Disease Society of America is at 1 800 345 HDSA. Their website address is www.hdsa. Dot org. With just a couple of seconds remaining, uh, Mariana, I'm wondering how you uh, are, are coping with all of this. I'm okay. I really am. Like I said, you have to be strong, and you know, I know what he's going through, and I know he needs my undivided support and attention. And you know, like you said, we joke about it. Um, you have to have a sense of humor. You really do to make it through. You really have to have a sense of humor. I know in the article I mentioned him. Um, Washing money and laying out, he was going through like a germ fetish, washing money, laying it out on the pool table, counting in p pages in a magazine, turning on the light switches with his elbow and the faucets with his elbow. And I would just let him go. You know, I thought this is something he needs to do. And then he got over it. He was on, put on medication and he got over it. Well, I, I wish the two of you the, the best of luck. Well, thank, thank you, thank you, you very both much. so much for being with us. I've been talking with Mary Ann and Paul Uhouse of Stormstown about Huntington's disease. For Take Note, I'm Patty Satalia. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.